today I'm going to teach you how to master debate. Um, we all do it all the time. Frankly, I do it kind of when I'm in the state I'm in, when I'm drunk. So that's when I like to master debate. Um, but the real question is, what is debate? We sit there and we talk about arguments that we have in bars and wherever, but really debate is something that we deliberate on. And in this country, we don't really deliberate. We just argue. So slide. And this is important because we live in probably one of the most divisive, divisive times in our country. Red, blue, fuchsia, um, all the different colors that exist in this country. You know, we live in this very divisive time and we don't know how to actually have conversations about real issues. And not only that, when we do have conversations, we do not talk. We bludgeon one another with facts and theories gleaned from cursory readings of newspaper, magazines, and digests. That's from Henry Miller, who liked to write about sex a lot, so he's awesome. Um, so you can either pick one. You can be a master debater, someone that's interested in discussing, oppo discussing opposing viewpoints and very open-minded, or you can be a masturbator, someone who basically just likes talking to themselves or playing with themselves. Um, and you want to... To quote the great 20th century philosopher Admiral Akbar, you don't want to have debates with masturbators because it's a trap. You're never going to do anything because they don't want to hear you. They just want to talk to themselves. <laughs> so how do you spot a masturbator? It's not as easy as spotting a perv or someone kind of sketchy. Masturbators come in all forms, and I've, frankly, I've masturbated before. And so, you know, it all happens. One of the characteristics, volume. If you're in a discussion with someone, a debate with someone, and they think their point is made more eloquently by screaming, they're probably masturbating right in front of you. It can get messy, so you don't want to deal with that. If they interrupt every time you have a point, they're not really listening to you, and so they're probably ignoring you, and they're probably masturbating. And again, this is often accompanied with volume, because frankly, what's better to interrupt someone than scream at them? Um, and then flawed logic. They're, uh, <laughs> Enough said. There's certain, there's certain people that display wrong logic, and um, maybe you've heard of them. For example, Glenn Beck, and I heard the audience say that. There are certain theories when you lose, use negative logic to try to prove something, like something may or may not have happened, but you can't prove it didn't happen, so therefore it happened. Um, and if you're, they're a sore loser, if, if, uh, if they don't know how to lose and don't know how to end an argument and they just screw off or say, I didn't want to get in this in the first place, they're probably a sore looter and they're probably masturbating. So what skills do you need to get to become a master debater? And we all know girl, uh, girls want boyfriends who have great skills, so um, we want to take care of that. So, and there's dategeorge.com. Um, listening is a great skill. You have to be able to actually listen to the specific arguments. You may be distracted by the other things that are going around, but listening is very important because you want to hear the opposing person's viewpoints. And it's really tough if you get distracted. And then you want to be inquisitive because that actually shows you're listening to the other person's opinions, and that means you're validating, you're validating their argument and you're really deliberating, which is, as we pointed out in the first slide, one of the perfect like, you know, characteristics of actual real debate. And then you have to understand what the difference between fact versus opinion are. And opinions are very emotional things. We all have very strong opinions, but just because you believe in something doesn't mean it's real, as the last presentation pointed out. Um, I do believe aliens have sex with all of us. Um, control your emotions. You may have valid arguments why things do not work, but the minute you lose your emotions, you're losing the argument. If you scream out in Congress that it's bad, and then finding common ground. To be able to find the common ground because debate at the end of it, successful de debates always end with compromise. Because you have to see other people's point of view to really you know, move on and get to the core parts of the issues. And then to be a great debater, you know how to lose. This man, he knew how to lose because when you lose gracefully, you become stronger than you can ever be before. And you become a glowing ghost. So that's awesome. And. Oh my god, it's Keyboard Cat!